Children are often intrigued by the small objects that we have lying about our house that can pose a significant choking hazard to them. At sharp corners, with early sitters or proficient runners even, they run the risk of cutting themselves if they fall against these. So we recommend cushioning them as such. At coffee tables that have sharp edges and corners all the way around, it can be a good idea to use a cushion that includes encloses the entire perimeter of the table and even at the corners that are down low for the early sitters. Televisions are among the first objects to fall over in an earthquake because so much of their weight is in the front. I recommend that you give your television a seat belt. At wall diffusers for furnaces or floor grates that get very hot to the touch, it may be necessary to put an enclosure around it. All bookshelves and dressers should be braced for protection in an earthquake or from a climbing child. If you notice, a bookshelf will appear to a child as a ladder. The toilet poses a drowning hazard to young toddlers, so we recommend putting a latch on it. You want to be sure that your hot water temperature does not exceed 120 degrees Fahrenheit. You can use a meat thermometer to measure it. At hot water heaters, to be sure that the water temperature delivered isn't any greater than 120 degrees Fahrenheit, it's often necessary to turn the dial down to warm, but you'll need to check to be sure. At on-demand hot water heaters, they're often limited to 120 degrees, but you'll want to check that as well. It's important to limit how far each window can open to only three inches. You can do this by putting in a cable. To prevent falls through windows that slide open, either vertically or horizontally, you can put something as simple as a window wedge. The cords at window blinds pose a strangulation threat. It's advisable to put up a cleat around which the cord can be wrapped. If you will have a fire present while the child is around, it's important to have a barrier in front of the fireplace to keep them a safe distance away. If the child is able to open the oven door and perhaps stand on it, they might be able to tip the whole stove onto themselves. It can also help to have a latch on the oven door. At the stove, some people choose to put on covers over the knobs so the children don't, aren't able to turn on the burners. Others simply choose to slide the knob off and only put it on when they need to adjust the temperature. While cooking, it's essential that you start using the burners on the back and always face the handles toward the back. If a pot is out here and a child can reach it, they might not only burn their hand on the pot, but empty the contents that are scaldingly hot onto themselves. Many homes have balconies or banister railings that are too widely spaced for kids. If the opening is more than three inches wide, a child can become trapped in it or fall all the way through. Very often, it's necessary to cover these openings with a mesh. It's important for parents to explore their yards and check their own house plants to see which are toxic if ingested. This is oleander, which is highly toxic. Another common plant found in the yard is the azalea, which is highly toxic.